Hey everyone, a bit of a different video today. I'm going to be talking about the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X. And uh, which one am I going to be buying and why? Uh, I feel like it's an interesting conversation to have as we head into next gen. Also, uh, it looks like we're going to hit 50,000 subscribers, possibly even today. Which means we are going to be giving away a PlayStation 5 or an Xbox Series X or a Nintendo Switch in the month of November. So stay, stay tuned for that one. That's going to be uh, an exciting time. But... Before I get into that, we already have giveaways going on. We have uh, three copies of Super Mario 3D All-Stars we're giving away right now. Gleam.io, link down in the description for that. We're also giving away a Switch Lite and then two games of choice uh, to second place winners. Uh, all you have to do is go down to the description. There's a, a list of things to do, including subscribing to the channel. Go to patreon.com slash Nintendo Prime uh, to get uh, you know 15 extra entries in every giveaway. A whole bunch of stuff. Uh, go check it out. Now. We don't talk a lot about Sony and Microsoft on this channel because obviously we're Nintendo Prime. I'm Nintendo Prime. Like, this is what we do. We talk Nintendo. But I do enjoy gaming beyond Nintendo. And the next gen systems really excite me because I'm a tech enthusiast and there's a lot of exciting tech going on with the new stuff coming out. I mean, there's GPUs in these systems that aren't even on the market yet. Pretty crazy. So which one am I going to buy? On paper, if you just want to base it on specs, you should clearly go with the Xbox Series X. It's the more powerful system. Yeah, PlayStation 5 is a faster SSD, but because a lot of games are multi-platform, they won't necessarily take advantage of that speed. So, hey, case closed. Xbox Series X, it's more powerful. But Sony has games. In fact, I think the conversation starts and begins with games. So let's get into the exclusives we know, the launch lineup, all that stuff. I, we're going to know more tomorrow, by the way. There is a PlayStation 5 event tomorrow. So if you're watching this a little later and that event has happened, uh, just know that I probably live streamed and already reacted to that event. So go check that video out. Uh, but yeah, like there's a PlayStation 5 event. Let's, let, let's just get into what we know so far. So Horizon Forbidden West is uh, a new game following up Horizon Zero Dawn. Uh, I didn't actually play any games on PlayStation 4 because I never owned a PlayStation 4. That doesn't mean that I'm not interested in this game. Now, most of the PlayStation 4 library is backwards compatible as well, so I can catch up on stuff. But uh, Horizon Forbidden West is a game that looks very, very good. Uh, it is the closest thing to Zelda uh, that they have, and Zelda is my favorite franchise of all time so i definitely am interested in checking that game out next up we have obviously marvel's spider-man miles morales a follow-up to the original spider-man game uh on on playstation 4 again i didn't play the original but i'm a big marvel fan a big spider-man fan and i know the original is really really good i've seen some twitch live streams of it so yeah i mean miles morales probably has the best chance of being an actual launch game because it's listed for holiday 2020 um you have gran turismo 7 I'm not a huge racing fan, so this one doesn't matter to me as much, but it is a game that is going to be there on the platform, so it is something to consider. Uh, Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart. This game is the one that makes the SSD look incredible, the, how fast the worlds are loading. Nothing about Ratchet, Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart looks bad. Like It looks like almost a perfect video game if one ever did exist. Definitely interested in that, even though it might not be there at launch. Demon Souls is a remake um, you know, from the PlayStation 3. Uh, we'll see what happens with that one, but I'm pretty excited. Don't know if it'll be at launch, but I'm, I'm excited for that. Project Athea, um, that is, uh, you know, developed by Square Enix. It's, it's exclusive. Looks very, very interesting. I'm really, really excited about that one. Uh, we have Returnal as well. It's a new action game from Riso Gun. Um, it's again, another game that just looks really, really good. And these are all games that are exclusive to PlayStation 5. Sackboy, you know, I'm, I'm not a big Sackboy fan, but you know, it is a game that exists um astros uh playroom again again another game i'm not that that interested in but it, it does exist um destruction all stars uh another game i'm not that interested in but then we get to godfall and godfall is a, a fantasy role-playing game focused around third person melee combat and hunting down loot um looks really really excited it's, it's made by gearbox so that that should be a pretty interesting one to check out um and then obviously you got to get into third party offerings now uh it it Third party offerings, to be fair, are going to be available on multiple platforms. So you don't necessarily need to buy a PlayStation for it. Um, like Immortals Phoenix Rising, you know, that's a third party game coming to PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X, also to Nintendo Switch. I will be buying it on Switch. We'll see if I end up buying it on other platforms as well. So I'm not going to go too much into the third party stuff. But then we head on over to Xbox Series X. And they've got their slew of games too. Microsoft is bringing some games. Um, obviously, we know Halo Infinite is, is kind of their go to game, but now that's delayed. Sometime in 2021. Uh, they're reworking it. So that was supposed to be the big launch game. So Halo's not there. We know a new Fable's being made. We don't know much about it, 
But we know a new Fable is coming, and that's really, really exciting. It looks like a reboot. We know State of Decay 3 is coming. Don't know if that's going to be a launch game or not, but that's coming. We know Forza Motorsport, again, another racing game. We don't know uh, if that's coming yet. Uh, Everwild, which looks really, really good. Uh, can't wait to play that one. Avowed, as well, is coming. That one, another game that looks really, really good. Um, As Dusk Falls is another exclusive uh, that looks really, really good. And you see, we're actually getting some unique exclusives here for Xbox. Stalker 2 is coming. The next entry in the Survival Hoarder Shooter series. That's pretty exciting as well. Um, Tetris Effect Connected is coming as well. Um, you know, I don't know if I'm necessarily as excited by that. I have Tetris Effect on my phone. Um, the Gunk is coming. And then you can't forget the Medium. I mean, the Medium to me is one of the most impressive games shown off for Xbox Series X so far. Even though it's not like necessarily visually impressive, like gameplay wise, it looks fantastic. Um, there's also War Warhammer 40,000 Dark Tide that's exclusive, Crossfire X, um, and you can't forget, you know, Senua's Saga Hellblade 2. You know, remember Senua's Sacrifice Hellblade? Like, this is Hellblade 2. Um, can't wait for that one as well. That was actually the very first game they showed off. Maybe it'll be ready for launch. I have no idea, but that was the first next gen game they showed off uh, before. You know, and then Scorn, which is going to be launching on xbox game pass that's a, that's a multi-platform game but yeah there's a whole bunch of um you know xbox id games you know we're going to talk about those you get into indie stuff and then you get into the third party games which are going to match up a lot with uh playstation 5 so you look at the games and you start to say well clearly playstation has an advantage in terms of major games coming and they do so games kind of leads to playstation now, now you start to think, well, what are the price of these systems? Well, we know the price of the Xbox Series X is going to be $499. We know the Series S is $299, but I'm not even considering the Series S. I'm just looking at the X. And then you go to PlayStation side. We don't have prices yet, although it's looking like it's going to be a $499, $399 situation for the digital only box. So, you know, I am looking to go have physical as an option so i am looking at both 499 boxes so the price points aren't going to be any different either so it seems like the clear winner should be well you know it, it looks like games are what matter most so go with playstation 5 but then you get to what microsoft's doing i have to buy all the playstation 5 games at 60 dollars a pop for almost the same price as one game i can get like a year subscription to game pass and get all the exclusive games plus like all the old exclusive games on Xbox One. And Xbox One is fully backwards compatible all the way back to the OG Xbox. So if you have like an OG Xbox disc that you want to stick in there, you know, I, I bust out, this is the one I always bring up, I bust out NFL 2K5, the greatest NFL game of all time, and I pop that disc in there, it's going to run. It's going to work. I could play NFL 2K5 today in 2020 on a next-gen system. Now I got to look any prettier, to be fair, but... Yeah, like, wow. That is amazing. Now, PlayStation 5 has backwards compatibility to PlayStation 4. They haven't confirmed all PlayStation 4 games will work. They did say PlayStation 4 games will be able to all be inserted, and it will attempt to run it. So we'll see what happens. But I that that's a big selling point. Full backwards compatibility over all Xbox generations and Game Pass. Again, check mark, check mark for, for Microsoft. So now you're left sitting here. Okay, the better games might be over here, but you can get the games cheaper over here, and you can play all the old games for cheap, too. So what the hell do we do? Well, the answer is pretty obvious, and those that have been paying attention know. I'm buying both. I can't decide. I literally cannot decide which one I want to go with. I, I just can't. Uh, it, I don't have an answer. I'm going to buy an Xbox Series X and a PlayStation 5 for myself. And yeah, I'm giving away another one on top of that. I'm spending $1,500 just on systems. This doesn't count the fact that I probably need to get at least one extra controller for each. And I'm going to want to get a game for each. Although on Xbox, you might as well just get Game Pass. But I mean, you know, I might buy like a third party game that's not on Game Pass or something for it just to compare. You know, maybe I get one game on each just to compare. You know, maybe, maybe it's Immortal Phoenix Rising. I just own it on all three platforms because I think the game is so great. I don't know. Like, I'll pick I'll pick a game that, you know, maybe it's the new Assassin's Creed game. I'll get that on, on PlayStation 5 and on, so I can have, like, a nice comparison of, of both of them and, and see how I, I think about it. I, I honestly look at this whole situation as you can't go wrong this time. See, last time when Xbox One and PlayStation 4 came, there clearly was a right choice. You go with the PlayStation 4. Xbox doesn't know what they're doing. They don't have games. Game Pass didn't exist at the time. It was more expensive. They were forcing Connect. Like, there was a clear, you buy a PlayStation 4. I didn't buy either, but you buy a PlayStation 4, right? That's what you do. You buy a PlayStation 4. This time around, I don't think it's that obvious. Now, 
not all of you are going to be able to afford to get all these next-gen systems like I'm going to do, and I get that. And if it wasn't for Game Pass, I couldn't afford to support all the systems as well with various games. But I do think that there is a lot to be had here. Oh, and I forgot to mention about Game Pass. EA Play is now part of it. Like, that's that's pretty that's pretty pretty big, even on PC. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm excited about both these platforms. I'm getting them. I'm getting them both. For the first time in my life, I will own all current gen systems, which will be a Nintendo Switch, <laughs> a PlayStation 5, and an Xbox Series X. I will own all of them. And I am so excited to deal with all of the day one launch bugs and everything and, um, you know, whatever hardware issues come my way or software issues come my way. It's whatever. Um, I even have a 4K 60 FPS capture card that uh, technically this camera is plugged into. So uh, you know what that means. Uh, if I'm live streaming any of those games, I'm going to have to bust out. I'm going to have to bring back. No, I'm not. <laughs> I was going to say, I'm going to have to bring back something, but actually I really don't. Um, I can run this video through my other capture card and just do 1080p. But I was going to say, I got to bring back my 4K Brio. You know what? Screw it. I got to bring back the 4K Brio so we keep our 4K into 4K. That's like 8K in one video that only displays in 4K to you. <laughs> Anyways, the point is, I'm really excited about this generation of gaming, uh, and I hope you guys are too. Uh, and I look forward to covering more and more of this extra stuff beyond Nintendo. Uh, as much as I love Nintendo, sometimes the biggest news happening isn't about them, and I want to cover that. And I want you guys to be interested in that coverage as well, because I feel like broadening our horizons as gamers is a good thing thing understanding the rest of the industry industry is a good thing we shouldn't write off sony microsoft ea ubisoft whatever all these companies just because maybe some bullshit practices come up nintendo has bullshit practices as well so we need to be fair gaming is gaming and i want to talk about all of it so yeah let me know what you guys think are you guys picking up one of these next gen systems or are you just going to sit at home with your switch or are you just still trying to get a switch and you're still rocking old gen or maybe heck maybe you just enjoy gaming as from an enthusiast perspective but don't buy anything yeah, there's, there's people like that out there. All right, folks, I'll catch you guys in the next video.